So in this session, in this session, let's try to look at a grading system, okay? So we are going to have a number of columns, including name. Then we have registration number, registration number. Then we have, let's have course. Let's have faculty, very fast, do as I do. Then let's have, for example, coursework one, coursework one. Let's have coursework two. Let's have coursework three. Let's have exam which we are going to mark out of 100. Now we need to find the grade. Actually, before the grade, let's have total. And afterwards, let's have grade. And finally, Remark. Okay. So that's what we're going to do in today's session. We have column num number one is name. We have registration number. Let's have course, faculty, coursework one, coursework two coursework three, and then exam marked out over 100. And finally, we have total grade and remarks. Now that you are done doing so, let's go to names. We shall assume we have our names in this column, though we are not going to type them in the interest of time, okay? We shall also assume we have, for the registration numbers, let's do random numbers very fast in the interest of time. What we are going to do, let's type one, let's, let's, okay, let's type 0001 as our first registration number. Let's type 0002 for the, third, for the second candidate. Now that we are done typing 001 and then 002, okay? We're assuming those are, those are our registration numbers. Actually, I type 00030s, but Excel has given me one. But I want to maintain that 00, okay? So I think what I should do Let me say zero, 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 dash one, something like that. Yes, it has accepted. I'm going to do the same for this candidate. Zero, 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 dash two. Okay. So after typing for the two candidates, I want to populate, to populate using that sequence. Okay, so I'm going to go to column B2 and B3, select them, select both of them, the way you can see on my screen. After selecting both of them, I'm going to use the fill handle down here at the bottom. The way you look at my castle, look at this tiny, if those that dodged last week, when we look at my selection here, we have a small, a small box at the bottom of this selection. Once I put my cursor there, the shape changes from a big plus to a tiny plus. 
So I'm going to drag downwards. You can see what happens when I drag. Okay. So it's generating numbers for me. So let's create up to about maybe one, 150. Okay. Let's generate up to 150 candidates. A minimum of 150. Me have made more than that. Okay. So maybe if I wanted to make it in 001, I would still put my N at the beginning, whichever you want to do. It was the system just accepts and then does it in that sequence. Now that I'm done generating registration numbers, I'm going to course. Okay. And of course, the first candidate is doing BIT. The second candidate is doing BIT as well. The third is doing BCS. The fourth is doing very fast members, do very fast as I do. We have BFEM, BFEM. We have Biad as another candidate. We have which other candidate? Let me see. We have CIA. Now that I have at least these now these candidates, okay. I'm just going to copy this by selecting all the cells. I move down and paste in the interest of time. So if I have 14, so I'm going to select all the 14 this time around, copy, then move to the next cell and the paste. I think I have now 28. So what I'm going to do, I'll not copy the 14, I'll copy the 28 so that I'm able to save more time. So I have 28, which I want to copy up to here. Copy, move down, paste. Now I have more, but still I'm going to select all of them so that I save on the time I would use to paste. So now I'm copying over 40 candidates, 40 entries. Then I am going to the next cell below, paste. I think I can just keep pasting since I, since I have more than enough records. If I, even if I don't copy again, at least those records will be enough to keep pasting. So I'm pasting until all the candidates have course, their courses filled in or populated. Yes, these excess ones, I think I can just delete because they have gone beyond the cell that are having the students numbers. So I've just deleted the, the excess. So I'll ask members to do the same. After typing a few courses, just copy those ones, paste, copy those ones, paste, so that you're able to have the courses populated. I think, I think you can do the same for, for faculty. Whosoever is in BIT must be in computing. Okay, so if I is doing BIT, I think the faculty is computing. I can just copy this as well. I think all these ones are under computing. BFEM, I think, is agriculture. BIAD, I think, is arts. This one is agriculture. So I'm just going to copy these ones and paste. As long as you have something in those columns, that is all we need. As long as you have something under course, that is all we need.
try to be as fast as you can in the interest of time. Then, now that I have up to this far, I'm doing the same thing we did previously, okay? I'm just doing the same thing, copy, paste, copy, paste, so that we save on the time we would waste, typing in one by one. Now that I'm done, I guess you people are also done. We are moving on to fill in cost work max. Let's now generate cost work max. We are going to use random numbers in the interest of time. So let's use a function called rand between. Therefore, we shall say, Equal sign as usual. Rand. Once you type the first letter, the system will do a filter and give you all the functions that to start with that letter that you've typed. So rand between is the third function under error. Double click on it. We want a number between zero, comma and four to maybe, of course, you can use any number we want. So after doing so, press enter, we've been given a random number. Then we are going to do the same for coursework one and coursework two and coursework. So we are, sorry, we are going to do the same for coursework two and coursework three. So can members do the same like have done for coursework one? So to generate for all these other columns, we shall say equal sign like we said before, rand between is the function we are selecting by double clicking on it. We want between zero comma and 40 and press enter. Then again, equal sign round between zero comma and 40, press enter. We are going to select the three columns. Actually, let's, let's also work out the exam as well. For exam, we want between zero and 100. Some of the must get between zero and 100. So we are doing the same thing, equal sign, round between zero, comma, and 100. Press enter. So you can tell these numbers keep changing because they're random numbers, okay? But if you typed these numbers manually, they would not be changing. When you double click in, in each one of the cells, the function comes back. Okay, to prove that indeed they are random numbers. So we are going to drag, we are going to drag these columns up to the bottom so that we copy these, these the entries, the contents of the cells to the adjacent cells. Okay. Now that I'm done copying to the adjacent cells below, we are going to, my selection is still selected. My cells are still selected. The contents are still selected. So what I'm going to do with it, since they are still selected, I'm going to copy again. If yours is not selected, please select it first. I'm going to copy, and why I'm copying, Remember, these are random numbers like you can see, okay? So I want them to become 
fixed numbers which are not which will keep which will not keep changing. So I've copied them all the way there in the range. I'll go to the same range where they are and under paste. Okay. Under paste, just like you can see. Click in the arrow under paste, not on paste, but the arrow under it. Under paste, we have paste. Under paste, we have paste. Of course, you, you get a pop down menu, a drop down menu. Okay. Then we have paste, and we have paste values as the second option. Finally, we have other paste options. Okay, so we shall go to paste under paste values. We have the first option which says values and click. Oh, I had put my cursor elsewhere, not where I wanted it to be. That's why my let me undo. So I want the answers, or I want whichever I have done to come to this cell starting from. E to up to H something, okay? I'd put my cursor elsewhere before pasting. So I want to paste in this cell, starting from this cell, where I started copying from. So I'll put my cursor in C, in E2. So we shall go to paste in case you hadn't done it. Then we have paste values and you click on paste values. So you can now see that once I double click in each one of the numbers, previously, whenever I could double click, I would get the function back. Now the function is normal and these numbers will not change. Okay? The numbers won't change again. They are now permanent numbers or fixed numbers because the functions that we are making them change have been eliminated. Now that we are done with the exam mark and coursework marks, I think let's create another column in between. Okay, of course we can work, we can use this same column for total to have everything done. But for purposes of simplicity, let's create another column. And in this, we are also learning that we can always insert rows and columns anywhere we want at any time we want to have them inserted. So to insert, to insert a new column, ask yourself, where do I want to insert it? Just like a row, okay? So I want to insert between H and I. Since I want to insert between H and I, that means I want this current I to extend to the right so that it's able to create space. So put your cursor on I, on letter I directly. Okay, and click. You put the cursor on that letter. Some people you know, will get challenges, but put the cursor on the letter itself for simplistic purposes and click. Once you click, the column gets selected. On your home tab, on your home tab where the cursor, I mean, sure that you're on the home tab, we have insert, okay? So, so click on it. You can see that I, I now have a blank column created. This, cur this current column was not there. Total was here. Okay, we had total here. Now it has been pushed to the right. So I have a blank column. Okay. So let's get total coursework. Total coursework. What should we use as our formula to determine cost, total cost work? For example, I could say that I want to pick the best. Okay. 
if I want to pick the best score to act as my coursework map, in such a case, I'll use a function called max, meaning I want to pick out the best, the maximum score, the highest score. Therefore, we shall go to our, of course, we can either type it or you can, we can just go to our editing group and look out for max within the inability function that are available. Okay, whichever you want, you can either type or just, if you are type, of course, you begin with equal sign. If you are to type it, by yourself, you begin with equal sign then max and open brackets. After opening brackets, you select the range. Okay. Select the range and press enter. I think there's a mistake. I didn't close the bracket. Yes, I didn't close the bracket. I guess it, I guess it's the reason as to why it's giving me this error. Okay. Actually, I actually selected beyond, I want to select coursework one, coursework two, and coursework three. I included exam 100 as well. So I think I should change it to G instead of, yes, it has worked. First of all, I, I didn't close the bracket. That's why I got the other error. Second, I'd gone beyond that. Uh, I'd gone beyond the what? The required range. Now, that's one option. If I didn't want to type, this is an empty cell once again. I don't have, if I'm to use a function, I don't need to type the equal sign, it will come automatically. So I'll go to the and our home tab, we have the function library here where you are seeing auto sum with this summation symbol. Click in the arrow, then select max. So when selecting max, it's, it is thinking of what it thinks I need to include in my range, but I don't want to include this exam 100, okay? So just go back here where you're seeing H2, edit it and put, I think it's supposed to be up to G2. Type the G2, press enter. Okay. So I have the highest score is still the same, 38. How about if I want to get the average score? Okay. In case I want to get the average score, I think this time around, let me use average. Okay, let me use average. Let me consider the average. Let me use the average to determine my total cost work. So I will say equal sign. No, let me not type the equal sign. Let me just go to the function label and select average. So after after selecting where you want the answer to be, on your home tab once again, we have editing group, then auto sum. After auto sum, we have this arrow pointing down. Okay. So let's select average. I don't want to include this exam 100, which is H2. Therefore, I'll come and edit it to stop at G. You can say I've selected from CW1 up to CW3. That's from E2 up to G2. Once we press enter, the average score is that for the first candidate. Okay. Then we have total. We need to determine the total score. Okay. To determine total score, we want to get this total course work plus 60% of exam mark. 
Okay. I said we are determining by getting total course work plus 60% of exam math. Incidentally, we have 60 in the first cell. Let me change it to 70 maybe so that people don't get confused. It was just a coincidence that we had 60 there. So we want to determine 60% of this mark here. Then on top of that, we add the, the coursework mark. So to do that, we shall say equal sign total coursework, which is I2 plus. Of course, mathematicians will tell us that in such a case, since we want to first determine the 60% of that mark there before adding it to the coursework mark. Good, math, good mathematicians will tell us that we shall use the body mass by applying a bracket somewhere, okay? So shall we say, open brackets, open brackets, H2 times 60%, close brackets, okay? So once we press enter, that's the final mark. 64.3, okay? So let's first scroll down for these scores. We've been able to get the, we've been able to get the what? The total course work and then total, the final grade, the final score. So this system is complaining that this, it is seeing some inconsistency. Okay. It is complaining that we have been able to determine, but we have left out this score. Remember, I didn't include this in the coursework mark. I didn't include this column for exam. That's why you're seeing that complaint there with a the green mark. But for us, we are okay with it. It seems that maybe we made a mistake and eliminated it accidentally. So I can tell you to ignore the error. If I want, I can tell you to ignore the error. So I've told you to ignore the error, but it's telling me to do the same for all. I'll not bother myself because I already know that it's not having any problem. In the case I did it by accident, I would be able to go back and correct, okay? But I'm aware that yes, I didn't include exam mark in the range when I was determining the average. So moving on to, to grade. For grade, gentlemen and ladies, well, let's try to have a grading scale. Let's have a grading scale. We are going to assume that for someone to get an A, they must have got 80 up to 100 to get an A, okay? To get a B plus, let's have a B plus, Somebody must get between a 75 to 79.9 to get a B plus. Then we have 70, 70 what? What's the next number? Seven to seventy four point nine. Seventy to seventy four point nine to get a B. Then we have maybe sixty to sixty nine point nine to get a C. 
Then we have maybe 50 to 50, 59.9 to get a D. Then let's assume all other scores from 0 to 49. 0 to 49.9 gives us a retake, okay? That's our grading scale. I hope members have captured it as well. Let's move on. So let's determine the grade. Sometimes people tell me that I gave them retakes. Unfortunately, it's not, incidentally, it's not me who gives retakes. It is your head that sits for the exam. Like last time, I didn't even mark anyone. The system marked you, and the system will determine your grades. Okay? So, I've never given, and I will never give a retake, but your head will either give you a retake or something that you have worked for. So, we are going to use a function. I want members to be attentive here, okay? We are going to use a function called if. Just like any other function, the syntax is equal sign, okay? Function name, open brackets, put the arguments in brackets and, and close. Any function you use, that's the syntax. For example, for example, if I want to, to write a function which is going to give me today's current date, I will say equal sign today, okay? So I said equal sign, function name, open brackets, Put your argument in brackets, close brackets, and press enter. Okay. So it has the system, the system has given me the current date. So that's the syntax in simple terms. Equal sign, function name. Okay, open in brackets, put your arguments, close brackets. So we're going to use a function called if to determine what you are going to determine. So shall we say equal sign, function name in this case is if, like I said, open brackets like we said also, okay? Now, when working mathematically, mathematically, we have what you call operators. We have different types of operators. Among us today, we have the common operators which are called arithmetic operators. For example, we have an operator called sum. For addition, we have an operator called addition. We have, sub, we have subtraction. We have division. We have multiplication. All those are called arithmetic operators. We also have other operators. For example, we have what's called logical operators, where our emphasis is going to be. Of course, there are other types, but that's not, that's not our business for today, okay? We talk about logical operators, these ones are used to carry out logical tests. For example, less than. For example, greater than. For example, equal. For example, less equal. And finally, great equal. Okay? So in this case, if we have a number between 80 and above, that means it must either be 80 or more than 80. 
In such a case, we used greater than operator. Great equal operator, okay? That is the operator we are going to use in such a case. Meaning, we want something which is either exactly 80 or more than 80. If I say greater than or without, if, if I say greater than without equal, that means it will only look for something which is more than 80 and leave out scores which are 80. Meaning in such a case, I'm looking at maybe 80.1, 80.2, 80.3, 80.4, etc. 81, 82, 85, 89, 92, 97, 100, 120, etc. Okay, but I want that number inclusive. Therefore, I will say great equal to 80. So we shall say if if this is J2, if J2 is great equals 80 comma, just like those that did the mathematics, such a statement, you're able to, 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 to see that it is calling for a comma, okay? Grammatically, it calls for, for a comma. If J2 great equals 80, comma, now we have what called input and output. Okay? So 80 in this case is our input. That's what has been entered in the system. So in case someone gets an 80 as the input, then we have output. Okay, what should the system output if the input is 80? What should be output? So the output must always be in quotes. Whichever you want, output must always be in quotes. Therefore, shall open our quotes, put our output, and close quotes. Okay? And close quotes. So the syntax is as simple as that. Equal sign, function name, open a bracket, put the argument. So in this case, we're saying, if J2 is great equals 80, comma, open quotes, put the output and close quotes. That's number one. Number two, whenever you open something in computing, in a computing system, some people are doing programming. I'll not talk about programming in this, in this class with so many other nanny programmers and nanny IT. So whenever you open something in computing, it must be closed. We open the quotes, therefore it, the quotes must be closed, okay? We have also opened the bracket at the beginning, okay? Therefore, the brackets must be closed as well. So I'm going to close the bracket. Of course, I haven't finished typing all what I'm supposed to type in that function. But let me first press Enter on my computer. When I press Enter before putting all other options, that's what I get. OK? That's what I get. So we have false. Why we have false is because the grade, the total is less than 80. So it's like telling someone that please go and buy me bread. Okay. What does it mean? If that person does not find the bread at the shop, or, or in the supermarket. I wouldn't expect such a person to bring something else. For example, cassava or anything they want, bananas. Okay. So since I didn't give any other option, I would expect either an A or false. Why? Because I didn't give any other alternative option. 
So what we are going to do, we are going to go back to our function in the cell here, double click there to get back the function we are typing. Then remove that closing bracket, just the closing bracket at the end. Okay. When you remove the closing bracket, that means we're able to add something there. So what we are going to do, gentlemen and ladies, we have listed items. Grammatically in English, my teacher say that when you are listing, every after an item, you put a comma, okay? So in such a case, eight to 100 is one item, okay, which is a A. That's one item. Before moving to next item, we shall, we shall put a comma first. So we shall say comma. We said equal sign if J2 great equals 80, comma, open quotes, put an A. We put a comma before listing the next item. Now, when, when listing the next item, remember it began with equal sign. This time around, we don't repeat the equal sign. We are going to repeat the entire process except the equal sign. So the equal sign at the beginning is done only once. It is entered only once at the beginning. We're going to repeat all other things by changing input and output. For example, input is A, to output is A. The rest will be the same. If J2 great equals 75, comma, that's our input 75, open quotes, B, okay? Then repeat, if J2 great equals this, comma, open quotes, put output, like that, up to the end, when until when all other options are exhausted. So this time around, we shall say if J2, if, open brackets, J2 great equals, equals what? Let me see. 75 comma great equals 75 comma open quotes. We want a B plus close quotes, put a comma. So in other words, we just keep changing the input output, input output. So I'm going to pause and then allow members to do it up to the end, then we proceed. Now that we are done up to the last item, the next, thing is to remember we've been opening the brackets and I said that whichever you open, you must close in computing. We open quotes, we close quotes. We open brackets, we close brackets. So for the brackets, we opened it, we opened the brackets, I think how, how many times? I think six times. We opened one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, you can even just come here and see that we open. One, two, three, four, five, six again. There are four. We shall get here and close our brackets six times. And press enter. So on pressing enter, we shall just random sampling. We have C. See, we were told it's between 60 to 69.9. You said what we are what we have is corresponding to, to a C. Okay. What we have is corresponding to a C. Whatever you'll find anything below 50, it is, it is going to give us a retake. So when we drag downwards, we X that now one will have false, okay? All the candidates will be graded. 
So as simple as that. For example, this candidate is having a retake with the 33. Let me make this score here. Let me change this score. Well, we have a nine. Let me make it a 50, 59. You'll see that the total change here, the total change here, and then the, the grade will also change. So once, once you change something, some, for example, I have, this is a five for coursework one. Once I change this, I expect many of the cells to change. For example, this one should change, this should change, and this should do change. Let me make it a 33. Okay, you can see all other columns which depend on that automatically change as well. Now, let's look at remarks. Under remarks. We want for remarks, under remarks, whosoever gets a promoted, whosoever gets, let me write it down here, a equals promotion, then B plus equals what? Maybe is promoted but on probation. No, for A let's give him a scholarship. Scholarship. This one is promoted, just promoted, but with no scholarship. Then we have a B. This one is on probation, maybe. We have a C. A C is maybe intensive, maybe coaching. Coaching for a C. We have a D. Maybe for the D, let's demote to the next class below. Then we have retake. This one should be terminated. Or we can drop. We drop this candidate, okay? So I want us to use the if function to determine this. So I'm going to ask members to try it out before you can come in. So in such a case to get the remarks using if function we shall say equal sign function name which is if in this case, open brackets, we are testing so what is in K2. Therefore shall we say if K2 equals, now since it is non-numeric, Okay, anything which is non-numeric, the input is supposed to be put in quotes. The, remember for numeric output, for numeric values, we only put the output in quotes, but the inputs aren't in quotes. For example, we talked about 70. We didn't put 70 in quotes, okay? We only put the output in quotes. But for nanonumeric, the input is in quotes as well as the output. Therefore, we shall say if K2 
equals open quotes okay equals equals what i don't know let me check equals a comma then open quotes scholarship okay if k2 equals a close quotes put a comma then open quotes for the output the scholarship Okay, close quotes like that until the end. So I'll ask the members to finish up with the remaining other options. After finishing up with all other options, we shall close our brackets. The number of times we shall have opened them. Thank you.